Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. This is the second video in a two-part series on decoders. In this one, we're going to take a look at testing decoders on the benchtop before we install them in a locomotive. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, one more time before we get started, I want to ask you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button here on the right-hand side of the screen. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video onto YouTube. We're getting close to a thousand now, and I'm hoping by the end of December that you guys will put me over. So thanks a lot, and let's get started with the video. Well, what I have here is a decoder tester. This uh, particular one is made by a company called ESU. They make low sound uh, decoders. And uh, there's another version of this available from TCS, the maker of the Wow Sound decoders, that looks almost identical, I think, except it has a red surface instead of a blue surface. The great thing about these testers is they have a motor here with a flywheel so that that provides the load for testing the decoder. It has a built-in speaker so you can uh, test the sound on um, um, sound decoders as well. Also, uh, there is a switch here so that you can turn the sound off. You can set the speaker for a 100 ohm uh, speaker if you have one of those, and a 16 ohm speaker. And that 16 ohm speaker is, is adequate also for uh, decoders that are designed to work with 8 ohm uh, speakers. So that's the one I use, you know, about 100% of the time, to be honest with you. Also on these, there's the uh, quick uh, connect uh, connection for the uh, power coming from your DCC command station. Uh, also, and there are solder pads here in case you want to solder directly to this uh, for a permanent type installation. Uh, then there's a series of LEDs. These two LEDs light up to show you you're getting track power. And then there's a uh, front and rear headlight LED, and then a series of four LEDs for functions one through four. So it allows you to test the output of functions of the decoder. Finally, and most important, I think, are all of the connections that are provided. There's one here for the standard 8-pin uh, plug. There's one for a 6-pin plug. There's this screw terminal for wiring a, uh, a hardwired decoder into the uh, unit. Uh, there's a 21-pin plug. There's one of these 18-pin um, sockets. And finally, there's a... Uh, a Plux 22 socket over here. I still have not seen a Plux 22 uh, equipped decoder, so I can't show you anything about that. Um, so what you can do then is whatever decoder you have, like I have here a, an old uh, Tsunami decoder with an 8-pin plug on it, I can go ahead and just plug that in right here. There we go. And then I can put the uh, wires into the screw terminals here, and then I can go ahead and give this, uh, turn the power on with my throttle, and I can test this out. And I'll show you that in a minute for this decoder and a couple of others. Um, the great thing about this is it allows you to test most types of decoders in advance. Say you go to a train show or you're on eBay and you find a great deal for uh, decoders. Uh, you might want to test them before you uh, go ahead and install them in a locomotive. Uh, there is one kind, though, that you really can't do that. That's these AT, Athern Atlas, um, style board type decoders that go in or a lot of locomotives that are being made today. And the problem with this, in order to test these, you have to wire them up and add the wires to them. So you're probably going to need to add a speaker wire, motor wire, and at least uh, two power pickup wires, outputs for your headlights, all of this kind of thing. By the time you go to the trouble to add all of the wires 
on a decoder like this to do a benchtop test, you might as well go ahead and install it in the locomotive and give it a test that way. But that's the only one that I know of that you really can't test in advance. So here, for example, is a, uh, a, a Wow Sound 21 pin decoder. It's a simple matter to go ahead and just plug that in right here uh, on this 21 pin socket. You can see it slips right in there, and then you can test that one out. I wouldn't suggest trying two at the same time, though. Um, so let me go ahead and turn on my DCC system, and we'll go ahead and crank this up and give it a test. Okay, I've gone ahead and zoomed in a little bit so you can get a better perspective on this. As I turn on the throttle, you can I've placed a couple of uh, marks on the flywheel so that you'll be able to see it turn. So you can see first that the red pilot light has come on in the decoder. These are the, this is an old Tsunami uh, Climax uh, steam locomotive decoder. So let me go ahead and turn that up slowly. And that's speed step one right there. You can see it's uh, turning the flywheel quite nicely. And we'll kick on the bell. Test the horn. Uh, the headlight. So you can see that little red LED came on. Um, let me see, right there for the headlight. And I can actually put that in reverse. And let's see what else. Um, I can hit three. That's the ho short horn. So there are various other things, sounds you can test all of these. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward uh, device for testing decoders very quickly. Um, heck, you might even be able to take this to a train show with you and, and test it if somebody has a DCC system that you can hook it up to real quick. Uh, let me go ahead and show you uh, very quickly the other uh, uh, method or the other type of decoder that I have here. I'm going to disconnect while I remove this. And uh, so that's why the power went down. So I'll get that one out. And then let's go ahead and plug in the 21-pin uh, wow sound decoder. Um, line that up. And then that just fits down over those 21 pins like that. Very straightforward. Um, let me go ahead and power this back up. And this particular, this is the new uh, version of the Wow Sound decoder. I think this, this is the one with the uh, Baldwin locomotives. I think this is a Baldwin locomotive cranking up here. I think the sound on this one is set much louder here. And we can crank it up. So you can you can test that, test the RPM, make sure everything's working properly. So we'll go ahead and shut that down. You can see it's coming to a slow halt there as the prime mover shuts down on this particular uh, decoder. I rarely test decoders before I install them in locomotives. Uh, the reason for that is in 25 years of doing this, I've had two uh, decoders that uh, were bad from the factory. So generally speaking, if it comes from the decoder, from the factory, it's probably going to run for you without any problems, assuming you don't make any mistakes doing the installation. Um, of course, the issue is, though, if you go out to a show or if you buy something off of eBay, you don't know what you're getting, okay? Even, uh, you know, if it's, if it's sold as, as used or by a private individual, you really don't know whether it's uh, ever been out of that package or not. So in those cases, I guess I could uh, understand someone wanting to test um, a decoder before they go to all the trouble of installing it in a locomotive. Well, that pretty much wraps up this uh, second video in the series on decoders. I'll remind you that in the first 
video in this series, I took a look at the types of connectors, sockets and plugs that are used on decoders in the market today. And in this one, we took a look at how to use the ESU Loksound decoder tester to test a locomotive decoder before we install it. I hope that answered the various questions you have about connectors and also testing decoders. And if you're in the market for a uh, decoder tester still, go ahead, take a look at the ones on the ESU and on the TCS websites. I'm sure they have more information available there on their various products. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.